Good morning and welcome to our memorial service this morning. It's uh, very nice to be with you once again. And so we're going to open our service first of all with the song, and then uh, after the uh, opening song, we'll ask that you might bow your heads while we offer a prayer. So here's our opening song. powerful, loving Heavenly Father, we come before you to offer our thanks and our praises, to humbly pray to you, loving Father, and to acknowledge our weaknesses, to acknowledge our sinful nature, to acknowledge, loving Father, that we are unworthy of your mercy and your grace, and yet we come to you to remember the life and the death and the resurrection of your son for that is that is our hope through him that through his blood that was shed that we might be washed clean of our sins that you might have mercy and compassion upon us that indeed you might show us that most amazing of all gifts the gift of grace and so we come before you now loving father pleading for your love for your mercy for your grace to offer our thanks to you for the amazing promises and blessings of this life. To ask you to be with those that, that are struggling at this time. Those that are suffering from sickness and disease. From poverty and from unemployment. To be with all those that need your loving healing arms around them. Those that are struggling spiritually. Those that are suffering from, from sadness and from loneliness. We pray that you'll bless each of us according to our different needs. And we offer our thanks for all these blessings through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, I thought this morning, brothers and sisters, that I would just have a look for a few moments at, a, at, a, at an amazing little story found within the story 
of the book of Esther. You know, the book of Esther is, is familiar to, to, to most of us. We, we know the story that, that she was adopted by, by a man called Mordecai and, and he raised Esther. And then, of course, she's called to come before the king after the, the king banishes his first wife, Vashti, and he, and he brings together all the, the beautiful maidens of the, of the Persian Empire. And, and Esther is chosen to be his queen. And, 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 and now things are looking really up. But, but the secret that is not known to the king is that, that she's a Jew. And of course, Haman, he plots a devious plan to get rid of all the Jews because he hates Mordecai because Mordecai refuses to bow down to him because Mordecai believes in the one true God and the one true God is the person that he'll bow down to. He won't bow down to human flesh and that was what Haman represented. And so, so Haman hated the Jews and he's an Agagite and so he's a relative of the, of, of the Amalekites that hated the Jews right back in the time of the Exodus. And so as the story unfolds, we, we come to this moment in time at the, at the end of Esther chapter 4 where Mordecai says to Esther, Esther, you have to go before the king to try to save our people. And Esther says to Mordecai, look, it, 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 it's not a good thing. I, I, could, I could lose my life if I, if I go before the king uninvited. The, the rules are the rules. You know what the Persian rules are like. And unless I'm invited to go before the king, it could be certain death if I go and approach the king uninvited. And, and Mordecai says to Esther, Esther, it may be for this very reason that you've been raised up from being an orphan to being the queen of the king of the whole world. It might be for this very purpose that you find yourself in this position. And so in fear and in trepidation, Esther prepares to go before the king, not knowing what her fate would be. Not knowing that on the morning that she's going to go before the king, whether she's going to see the sunset on that particular day. Because maybe if the king doesn't stretch out his arm with the golden scepter and invite her to speak, maybe she'll be taken away and executed that very same day. And so she goes before the king in Esther chapter 5. And it's an amazing story. Because it was... A time of great uncertainty, as it is really for us today. We live in, in times of uncertainty. We're not quite sure what's going to happen next. This, this, this virus has got a grip on the world. It's got a grip on us. It's got a grip on every aspect of our lives. In many parts of the world, we're in lockdown. We don't have the freedom to be able to move as we used to be able to. We don't have the freedom to go to the shops we don't have the freedom to visit one another. We don't have the freedom to come together and meet in fellowship one with another. And we live in a very uncertain world. And, and, and while some countries are getting hold of vaccines, other countries are not. And this disease of death is spreading its tentacles right to the four corners of the world. And so it was a time of great uncertainty. And, and Esther is living that life herself. And it says that when she came before the king... The king graciously stretched out his arm in the golden scepter and received her. And he offered the queen anything she chose. Esther, my love, you can have anything your heart desires, even to half my kingdom. And what Esther asks for must have shocked the king. Like you imagine it. You imagine that we are offered the world, that we are offered half the kingdom of this world. You can have anything you like. You can have riches, wealth, prosperity, property, abundance of food and, 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 and precious things, gold and diamonds and jewels. You can have anything you like. And what does she ask for? She asks the king. To come for dinner. For dinner. And not just the king. Bring your best mate. Bring your best mate to dinner. His name's Haman. Bring Haman and come for dinner, the two of you. 
And the king must have thought, like, just a moment ago, oh, you know, she was on death row. She was this far from dying, as it were. If I hadn't have stretched out my hand and offered her the golden scepter, she would have died. She was this far from death. And when she goes from this far from death to being offered half my kingdom, what does she ask for? She invites me and my mate to dinner. And so the story unfolds that when they get to dinner that night, the king again, in his love and his generosity, offers Esther the world. He says, you can have anything you want. What would you like, my love? Half my kingdom. Half my riches. Half my everything. Palaces. Riches beyond our imagination. You can have half of it. And what does she say? She says, come for dinner again tomorrow night. Wow. The king must have been thinking, what's going on here? But you see, what Esther understood was, and this is the lesson for us. This is our exhortation this morning as we prepare to partake of the bread and the wine. Esther understood the principle of patience. And giving God time to work out his purpose. You see, Esther understood there was a relationship between the king and his friend that was not a healthy relationship for her and for her people. And that this friend of the king had ordered the execution of all of her people including Mordecai, her uncle, including all her friends in the meeting in the Ecclesia. They were all going to die at the hands of the king's friend. And she knew that if God was going to save them, she had to be patient and give God the time to provide a way of salvation. And that's what we need to do, brothers and sisters, in these days of uncertainty when we're not sure of what's happening, as we see brothers and sisters and friends and families and partners and wives and children get sick and even die from this virus, and we long for the kingdom to come, we long for the return of Jesus to come, we long for that time when there'll be no more suffering, no more sickness, no more diseases, no more poverty, no more death. But we have to allow God to work in our lives and be patient and understand that he's working a good work for us. And what Esther does is Esther gives God that time. You know, in chapter 4, she's asked for the people to pray. For three days, she's asked the people to pray for her and to pray for their salvation. She's giving God time. And of course, what happens is this remarkable story that, that we won't go into because we just don't have the time to. But between that first meal, between that first dinner, that first banquet and the second banquet, the king goes to bed that night and he can't sleep. And because he can't sleep, he thinks, well, what am I going to do? And, and, and traditionally, the king would ask for somebody to come in and play some music to soothe his mind. And to play some music in the background so that he could, he could collect his thoughts and, 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 and rest easy on his pillow. But not this night. He did something quite strange, quite different. He asked for, for, for one of his servants to come and read to him. And he said, why don't, why don't you get a, a, a book of the records of, of, the, of the history of the kingdom? Just, just pick any book you like. And, and the servant picked any book. And he said, just open it anywhere. And, 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 he, and he picked up his book and the book just fell open to the story of Mordecai discovering a plot to assassinate the king. And, and the king asked and said, has, has, has that man ever been rewarded? And of course, the stories revealed that Mordecai has never been rewarded. And so the, the king early the next morning 
be, before sunrise, he, he gets up and, and, and Haman's on his way to, to get the king's permission to execute Mordecai and to start the process of executing the Jews. But before he can even get a word out, God intervenes. See, the patience, the patience of Esther has allowed God to work his miraculous ways. And before Haman can say anything, the king says to Haman, what should I do to the man who I'm indebted to? And of course, Haman thinks it's all about him. And he explains to the king how he should reward this, this man with, with great pomp and ceremony and, and march him around the city and put the king's robes and the crown. And, and of course, that's the reward for Mordecai. That's the reward for us, for being patient, that we are going to be dressed in kingly robes. We're going to be rewarded with the grace and the mercy of God. And it's an amazing story to think that if we are patient, if we allow God time to work his plan and purpose with this world, that in the end, in God's good time, not our impatience, but in God's good time, all things will be fulfilled according to his word. And so we come to the central portion of our meeting this morning. We come to remember our Lord Jesus Christ, to remember his life, his work, to remember his sacrifice and the enormity of that sacrifice, to remember his death. But most importantly, to remember the promise that God made to him. That in patience, he would be rewarded with resurrection and immortality. And so it's, it says that the Apostle Paul says, For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and as often as you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let us offer thanks for the bread. Loving, gracious, heavenly Father, again we come before you to continue our praises and to thank you, loving Father, for this bread, the symbol of your son's body, which was broken in perfect obedience that loving father we might have life and life eternal with you and so loving father we we look to our lord's example we look to his life we look to his patience we look to the way that he lived his life in accordance with your way so we we ask you to help us to be more like him in our days which remain until he comes. And so we ask you to bless this bread. Blessed loving Father, through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And so when he had given thanks, he took the bread and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us offer thanks for the wine. Gracious, loving and merciful Heavenly Father, once again we approach your throne of grace to bow before you and to praise you, to thank you, loving Father, for your redeeming work through your Son. And we see in this wine that we are about to drink of the 
representation of your son's shed blood. We, we pray, loving Father, that you'll look down upon us with mercy and compassion and remember our sins no more. But bless us, loving Father. Help us, loving Father. Help us to be more like your son. To recognise, loving Father, that, that only through him are we redeemed to you. And so we thank you for this wine. Wash us clean of our sins, we plead. Wash us, loving Father, and remember our sins no more. Have mercy upon us, O loving God. For we offer our thanks for this emblem in and through your Son, our Jesus, our Christ. Amen. And so after the same manner he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me for the forgiveness of your sins. Once again, thanks uh, very much uh, for being with us. I, I know in, in, in certain parts of this world we're, we're in areas of lockdown and, and in difficulties and we trust and pray that, that God will continue to be with you, that, that you'll continue to be considerate of, of one another and, and do whatever is necessary to, to look and help and, and, and care for one another. Uh, please continue to, to, to keep in touch and, and support each other during, during these difficult times. Be patient. Wait patiently for the coming of our Lord. The, the kingdom surely is not too far away, so, so we, we, we appeal to you to, to think upon these things and, and, and be encouraged by the, by the uncertainty of the world which, which creates in us a certainty of the, of the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. So until we meet again, we, we pray that God will be with you and that God will bless you. And uh, until we meet again, we say goodbye for now. We're going to close first of all with, with a song and then with a, a closing prayer. So God bless you and may God keep you in all his ways. Bye for now.
Our Father in heaven, we come and we are thankful for the time that you have given us today. A time to sit down and to look at the life of your son, for us to take that bread and wine, those things that, that are representative of his life, blood poured out for us and, and his flesh. And we are so thankful, Heavenly Father, for that hope that we have in his life. It has been illustrated to us today that from this moment on, we can go forward into a new week and we can be uh, revigorated for the things of you, for your word, for, you, for a life in you and for a life in your son. We so much look forward to seeing the return of your son soon. And it is our prayer as we leave here today that it might be very soon, even tonight, that our lives might be interrupted by the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So be with us as we go into our week. Be with us every single day, Father. We ask this prayer through the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen.